Good morning once again and welcome to the second part of our views this morning. I am still with the ladies here in studio. If you just tuned in, I am Sandra Cope. I'll be taking the lead on this, but I am in studio with my co-host Sarah, Kira and Shivan. So we're going to be diving into our views part two this morning. Now, ladies, there is this lady. Mm. She's married. She has children and the husband went ahead and got a vasectomy without consulting with her first, yeah? And she was livid and she has left the marriage. Do yeah. they have any kids? Yes, they do. They already have children, but he went and got a vasectomy without consulting with her. Mm -hmm. So our to the topic of our views too this morning is, is it a deal breaker for you if you're married, you already have children, and your husband goes and gets a vasectomy, or your wife goes and gets her tubes tied without consulting with you first? But before we get into the answers, let's look at what these things are. So a vasectomy is a form of male bath control that cuts the supply of sperm to your semen. It's done by cutting and sealing the tubes that carry sperm. Vasectomy has a low risk of problems and can usually be performed in an outpatient setting under local anesthesia. Before getting a vasectomy, you need to be certain you don't want to further a child in the future. Although vasectomy reversals are possible, vasectomy should be considered a permanent form of male bath control. And looking at tying the tubes, but um, the correct term is tubo ligation, also known as having your tubes tied or tubo sterilization, is a type of permanent bath control. During tubo ligation, the fallopian tubes are cut tied or blocked to permanently prevent pregnancy. <coughs> so ladies, do, do you think, do you think if your partner went ahead and, and did, had this procedure without consulting you, does it matter if you already have children? Yes. Do you think so? No. With me, if, if you already, that's why I asked, do they have children? Yes. Yeah. If you already have children, I think it's okay. But the problem here is the fact that we didn't have a conversation about it is what the problem is. So um, if we, if you felt maybe financially, it's the key, the family's taking a toll on you. Yeah. It's <coughs> like we are talking about open marriageness, you know, op openness in a marriage. Yeah. Yeah. Sit down and talk to this person. You know what? Having many kids is taking a toll on me, you know, or the pressure is too much. And I think maybe we should stop on number four. Yeah, <laughs> would you stop at number four? Because it's, it's getting too much. However, there are so many ways of actually um, family planning. So I don't see, um, with me, I don't see the reason as to why that should be a deal breaker for me. If we already have kids, it's not a deal breaker for me. What do you think, Sarah? You look lost in thought. Um. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no, but like on a serious note, um, I think it was a conversation that should have been had. It's necessary that it should have been had. However, the decision on the person who, the, the man who decided to take the vasectomy, that was entirely on him and he had every right to go and take it. But he should have at least Talked informed about, yeah. or sent an email at least that I'm getting a vaccine. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> at least he should have sent an email. You're busy, boo, but know, I'm going in. Yeah, I'm going, I'm going for a vasectomy it. because I do not want to have any more children. And I think people should be allowed to not, you know, not want to, should be allowed to do whatever it is that they feel is necessary for them, so but, for their bodies. But I, I, I think if, if the tables were turned mm -hmm. and the woman went and got her tubes tied without telling her husband, I think it would be a sandstorm. First of all, people would start telling the woman, oh, now you've tied your tubes, he's going to find someone <laughs> else to give him children, what if he wanted a big family? The conversation changes. Mm. And when it's a man, it's, it's supposed to be okay. No, you know what I'm I mean? Not, I, know, no. I, did not say, I did not say that it should be okay because it's the man who has done it. What I'm saying, it is okay that... Whichever party chooses. Whichever party chooses, mm. that is on you. Because to take, 
to have children is a great responsibility. Mm -hmm. And this is the man, the head of the home. So perhaps financially, raising children and financing that is being a huge burden on him. It is okay that he got the vasectomy. What is not okay is that he did not inform mm. his wife that he got the vasectomy. And perhaps she doesn't want more children. But it's just that yeah. sense of betrayal, like you couldn't yeah. share yeah. this with me. But also, like, you yeah. see, most of those, the procedures are quite permanent. Like by the time you go and do it and you have not told me, it's as though, to me it would be like, did the children I give you, are they that bad? Like you really had to go to the extent yeah. of having yes, that there's, and there's, then there's you did not tell me. That is how I would feel. Like if even my children heard that your father did not tell me that he was going to have a vasectomy, they would feel like, okay. So like, is the situation of having children that bad to the extent that you did not even tell me and then you went ahead and had the procedure? You know, it, it, I, if you look at it I that way, concept, when you, you look know. at it that way, the mere fact that you hid it from me and then you did a procedure that is permanent speaks volumes. Two things. Either you're not happy with the children that I gave you or you're just completely fed up of making children. This no, is the thing. No, she, There's one I, I mentioned. It could be financial or maybe... Or maybe, because we have had instances of men who have secretly had vasectomies and then their wives have gone ahead to get pregnant. <laughs> you get it? <laughs> perhaps, <laughs> perhaps maybe. he's not sure that even those children are <laughs> Or maybe <laughs> he's waiting to maybe, see. Well, well, in or maybe defense. he thinks there are issues of um, of infidelity happening. I mean, people have different reasons <laughs> for doing the things that they do. The vasectomy was too extreme, my guy. Yeah, eh? You yeah. should have <laughs> first to explored <laughs> other options. <laughs> well, well, well. In his defense, <laughs> when you have a vasectomy, you have a window period when you can steal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's it's a little window. Yeah. But on to my next uh, thought. Like this guy, he went and had a vasectomy. Did he also think it through? What if something changes in the future? God forbid he loses his children mm -hmm. or he loses his spouse and he has to, like, in move on marry someone else who would want children mm -hmm. yeah like couldn't he opt for like other forms of contraception that's the thing and the thing is that there are not so many options for men they say mm. that you use condoms they, they you either it's either condoms or it is um the vasectomy think, yeah, there are not so are many options, options for actually, men but yeah. otherwise for women there are many options they there's the there's the pills they are there in you know, self-injectables, there are the injections, there's the IUD, th there's the tube ties. I mean, we, we are spoiled for choice. But again, perhaps maybe his wife also did not want to get on those contraceptives. So he's like, if you're mm -hmm. not going to do it, then let, let me, me do it. Yes. Yes. Because also when you look at it that way, I mean, different family planning methods come along with different consequences. Like if you're going to constantly take the pill, yeah. it could actually affect you in one way or the other. It so if, if, if you look at it in that perspective of maybe the wife refused to take the contraceptives and the, men, the man went ahead to take this drastic measure, it, it makes sense somehow, but not fully for me. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. I agree. And I feel even when you're opting for contraception, you should go to your gynecologist Absolutely. and see which particular one works out for you. Mm. Don't just copy mm. paste what your friend is taking and then you go and do that. Because mm. I've had some instances, some friends of mine, who could not use the IUD their body rejected it it was mm. just too much for them and yes. then some they took uh, the pill and then they just gained a lot of weight over mm. a very short period of time mm. so I think yeah. it's quite important to speak to your gynecologist see the options and t take it from there Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah that's true but now let's get a little bit controversial mm -hmm. like many women after you've had kids with your husband and everything, many women actually would prefer the man to go and get a vasectomy. Not them. Yeah, not for <clears throat> them to go and get their tubes tied. Now they say it's because like how, uh, I just told you before, you can do it as an outpatient. It's, it's, it's not a very serious procedure compared to tubal, uh, yeah, tying, yeah, yes. to, to tying your tubes. But do women do it because it's a simple procedure or they want to secure the bag? Yeah, they don't want illegitimate children upon their husband's death. You know what I mean? That is sharp. <laughs> <laughs> that is sharp. I don't want surprises when they bring when they bring children. The whole pie is there. mine. Exactly. Mm. That that is, I think, a very smart thing to do to have him do a vasectomy. I mean, I, I didn't think about it until now. But <laughs> now you have been enlightened. Now I've been enlightened. Not try these things at home. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> <Good> do. <laughs> Well, let's look at um, 
data from the ministry uh, shows us the ministry of health shows an increase in the number of men who carry out vasectomy ha have been noted mostly in central and western uganda the 2017-2018 financial year a total of 1235 vasectomies were carried out nationally compared to 1313 men in the year 2018-2019 and then moving on to the 2016 Uganda Demographic and Health Survey report indicated that the proportion of currently married women in Uganda who have undergone sterilization increased from 2% in 2000, 2001 to only 3% in 2016. Now let's take a look there of, according to the 2016 Uganda Demographic Health Survey, 3%. So as you can see here, 3%, and the district with high numbers observed, uh, Wambale, Manafwa, and Kasese. Yeah, as you can see there, for women, women is lower, but for men, it's a bit higher, as you can see there. Male sterilization is generally low across the country. 26 out of 135 districts did not report any cases. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the highest numbers were recorded in Kampala 139, Buta Leja 138, and Arua 60, 61 districts. There is need to establish the reasons why the method is not popular in many districts, so as to embrace the opportunity to provide permanent methods in these districts. As you can see, for men, it's much much lower mm -hmm. yeah yeah <coughs> and uh the conclusion is the uptake of female sterilization was very low and this was associated with age household wealth parity and contraceptive decision maker the uptake of family planning programs needs to focus on male engagement to increase joint decision making on family planning yes, and this is what true. you were saying yes. Sarah. It's, yeah. yeah it's very important you because when when you're married to somebody it's their business to know that you don't mm. whether you want to have more or don't want to whether you yeah. want to have more or more children or not because also there are instances where i think wh where why some people would take drastic measures say to either tie their tubes or get a vasectomy it's probably because maybe their partner or spouse is not forthcoming Mm. You know, you're yeah. insisting, I want more children, and I want more children. And for women who to tie their tubes, we, we know how hectic it is to it carry is, a yeah. pregnancy. Oh, Some yes. people, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's child's play, it's super easy. Well, for others, it's very, very tedious, and it can even be dangerous to your life. Some women even get bedridden all nine months because they've carried yes. a pregnancy. Mm. So for people to take these drastic measures, I think it has push them against the wall because there are many other options. There are so many other options as opposed to, you know, sterilizing yourself. And I think that is why the numbers are really low here in Uganda because one, we are able to, you know, use, consider yeah. other methods. And I think the people who take <coughs> the drastic measures of making it permanent, they've just been pushed to the wall, I guess. And I, I totally agree with that because some men or some women but I'll talk in this instance of some men. They say, I want a very big family. Mm -hmm. I want a very big family. And you want like 10 kids from one woman. Mm -hmm. you know, now, would you blame this woman if she goes you see? and she does it with her <laughs> telling? <laughs> what? Because we, we are the ones who do the heavy lifting. Uh -huh. mm. And that, that's is why, why, yeah. that, that is why it is very important to sit down and have these conversations yeah. with your spouse all the way from the, fact, from the time you propose. And by the time you even get married, you should know that my woman wants this amount of kids. Do not, mm -hmm. do not marry a woman and then maybe two years into the marriage, five years into the marriage, then you're shocking her with the news of, I want a football team plus substitutes. Maybe she did not want to <laughs> sign up for that in the first mm -hmm. place. You understand? Mm -hmm. So for some women, honestly, and especially for couples, it is very important that you sit down and have these conversations and say, okay, we're going to have these kids. Okay, after this number of kids, what next? Can we do family planning? Can we go ahead and do the permanent methods? So that it's a, it's, 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 it's a concession it's a where you sit down and you all agree. Instead of other than having the man on a different page and the woman is on a different, different page. Yes, there are men who want to have um, very big families, but the woman might not w be willing to do that probably because her career is at stake. So you wife. also need to put that into consideration and stop blaming the other party of, oh, you're not being considerate, me, I want children, I want to carry on my family lineage, but did you have this conversation even before you got married? Mm. It's very important. 
I think very, so. Very, very true. What do you think, Kira? What's your take? I do agree with both ladies. I feel like uh, conversations or like I always say, communication is very important. So uh, sitting down with your partner, 100%, if they sat down, they wouldn't be. We would, they wouldn't be having this kind of conversation, you know. So uh, sit, sitting down and having conversation with your partner, discussing issues serves a lot. And if it's still not working for you and you still want a big team, talk about getting a second <laughs> wife. So I don't know. Get a second. But <laughs> you are, you're now you are. making Look, this too do. drastic. <laughs> also, uh, uh. you're making it worse. <laughs> get wife number two. <laughs> If wife number one, no, honestly, there's so, there's so many, there's so many reasons. But then again, there's the issue of wanting, but you cannot finance. That is where the problem is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you cannot finance this big football team plus substitutes that you yeah, but want. But by the time you most cannot, men, most, most men in sits on a big family. Most of them can actually finance. Don't the tell. Don't lie, Kira. Look at the numbers in rural areas. How many women mm. are struggling to raise their six, eight children by themselves, and their husbands are not I doing do. anything? I feel like there's so are, many, I and not even just in rural areas. Even in in the city now, you find a lot of women are actually single moms, and yet they are in relationships, but are financing this one child by herself, and it is not easy. Raising children is not cheap. It's not. It's, it's not really easy. Not it's costly, cheap, and it's not easy. And a lot of people. I don't, because back in African traditional society, a long time ago, and still some people think this way, that it is a privilege. that Having it a is, big family. But it not privilege, it is uh, something to brag about, having yeah. so many kids. Yeah. But you are not raising these kids. You are not financing this lifestyle of yours. Make it's it very, make sense. It's very true. I, I don't think we should focus on having a lot of children and their quality of life is so poor. Mm -hmm. Have less children and give them a better quality of life. Absolutely. Yeah. Be able to provide for them in in all in all spheres, you mm -hmm. know. Give them the best education, give them the best medical care, like access to medical care. Yeah. They need it. Don't bring children into this world to suffer and you know you cannot cater for them. Mm -hmm. Then you have no business having them. I think no it's parent no parent ever wants that. And I think uh, by the time a parent keeps saying, um, another one, another one. Yes. Another one. I've been I've been able mm -hmm. to actually take no. care of them. No. No. Guys. Nedda, please. Look at the numbers of families living in poverty yes, in I our know. country. Yes, I know the numbers are actually high. Yeah, so I, I believe uh, when you, I'm not saying they're idle, but if you don't really have <laughs> much to do, that's true. You, if you, you don't, make children. you make children, <laughs> you end up finding yourselves making children. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, uh, families, big families, most big families have actually seen. The fathers have actually been able to take care of their kids. And uh, even if they've actually had the conversation with their wife, um, I want two kids, three kids. Yes, you may be able to provide for them. And you get comfortable and you're like, you know what? I think I can be able to support another and another. Before you know it, you have a football team like you call it. No. But my womb is not a factory just because you can afford. Would you? Eh? Raising children will not become a career also. And that's when a man will What do you mean your own is not a factory? It's not. <laughs> and that's when a man will say, okay, let me get I number two. and ambitions and like, yeah, I need to, I need to have kids. Mm -hmm. I've had my kids and they are growing up. And then I focus on other things. Now you want to take me back. Exactly. Excuse me? As in, it's not, and, and this is the thing, Kira, there are a few large families where the man is able to take care of the family itself. We are talking about the majority consensus in this mm. country, mm. and more than half of our population is living in poverty, and that is a fact, because yeah. people are being reckless and not taking this whole family planning situation Serious. seriously. <laughs> it is very important. Having a smaller family will save you a lot of problems. And also look at the many disadvantages of having large families. We have had cases of incest. We have had cases of molestation and defilement. Um, you know, children are dropping out of school because they're not able the yeah. parents are not able to facilitate and give everyone a proper education. People are starving, teenage pregnancies. There are so many downsides to having a large family in yeah. our economy. So I don't do it. I absolutely agree. <laughs> well, <laughs> as we wind up, just before we wind up, I want to read a comment from a guy, Vati Boy. And he says, replying to at CTV Uganda, oh my God, it's not even a deal breaker, it is a permanent breaker. Like really, mm -hmm. how can you take such a lifetime mm -hmm. decision minus the consent of your partner? If you can't share such a big thing, then what more can you share? 
in Luganda. Oba o Jose no Kamala. Eh. Oba o Jose no, no Kamala. Kamala. <laughs> <laughs> you have Kujoga than which well, extent. Well, I uh, would like to know what you think. We'd like to know your views. What do you think about this subject? So head down to our social media pages at CTV Uganda. Don't forget to use the hashtag sunrise at sea. That was all for our views too this morning. Don't blink. Well, I hope you enjoyed Sunrise at Sea this morning. Remember, we are with you every morning, Monday to Friday, from 7 a.m. all the way to 9 a.m. Now, I would like to give a chance to all my co-hosts to tell you their social media handles because we want to keep these conversations going. You know what I mean? Over to you, Sarah. Oh. <laughs> um, if you want to follow me, please follow me on uh, Twitter and Instagram at Apollosara one let's continue this conversation on my social media handles and also the social medias of ctv let me let us know what you think yeah yes and uh you can actually follow me both instagram and twitter with the kira natozo that's k-e-i-r-a and a-t-o-z-o and you can also follow our social media platforms which is ctv uganda you know you can continue the conversation from there well, I for one, mine is Shivanoma90. Of course, it's at Shivanoma90. You can feel free. That is my Twitter handle as well as my Instagram handle. And feel free to leave your comment down below and let us know what you're thinking. And Sandra Cope, that is Sandra, S-A-N-D-R-A -A underscore Cope, C-O-P-E. 2020 that is my twitter handle and the same for my instagram if you like tiktok if it's your thing you can go to sassy s a w -S, s y underscore sandy 11 and you can check that out well that is all we had for you today on sunrise at sea but don't go anywhere because next time is a movie you would want to relax with that and tim cash is coming on with the branch request at 11 a.m but do remember at 7 p.m we do have the luganda news and 9 p.m we have the 9 p.m edition english news again from here from sunrise at sea and all of us here at the station, we do wish you a lovely, lovely day. See you tomorrow and don't blink.